Hello? Maxine. Hi, is this Bay? This is Bay. How you doing? Uh, very good. Okay, yeah, where do we get started? Uh, let's start at the beginning. Who was uh, okay. who was the guitar player that made you want to pick up guitar, or were you involved in music before that? Well, we were involved in music before that in a more classical uh, style, um, and also other instruments. Uh, I played flute and school band, and Roxy played clarinet, and then you know then she took up drums you know, shortly after, and I took up guitar shortly after. And uh, and that grew into wanting to play rock and roll. I don't know how how at what level you want to get into because everything can be uh, so long to talk about it. You know, <laughs> as far as going that that far back. But as far as an um, influence on guitar, actually, you know, we grew up here in the uh, Detroit metro area, in the okay. suburbs. And for me, there was this local band called Zooster. And they were just crazy, and it was it was uh, uh, very guitar oriented, and and the guitar player was his name was Mike Forsyth, and he played guitar like Jimi Hendrix, Eddie Van Halen, um, Rick Derringer, all these guys all put into one at a very crazy level. He would play with his teeth. He wore those big like Kiss type clog boot type shoes. Platforms. <laughs> yeah, the platforms, right? And Super tight, satin type bell bottoms, hip huggers, uh, jumping on tables. He was cordless, um, you know, throwing it over his back and playing it, to, you know, over his back, and and it, and it sounded like a Eddie Van Halen craziness. And and when I saw that, I thought, oh my God, you could do that with guitar, <laughs> you know. And I always loved rock because I saw Fanny, you know, first as you know when we were like twelve or so on um, some international rock show, and I got to see at that point, along with Roxy, that girls could rock. But to get to the crazy guitar playing, it, it really was Mike from Zooster. When I saw where he took the guitar, and it was like, I want to be a crazy guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, you know, and then Ted Nugent, too. I saw Ted Nugent, he wiggled his tongue, and just, he was crazy, and I just wanted to be one of those crazy metal guitar players without really thinking about it. I just, that's just what I wanted. Right. Wanted to play great. Uh, you know, you have to grow into all this. And uh, so one thing led to another. And and what's your next question? <laughs> 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 I could just go on forever, and I don't want to keep you forever either. Uh, uh, well, I, well, how about like when you got when you and your sister made the switch from like that classical background to rock and roll? Were your parents shocked, supportive? Well, they always knew we loved rock and roll because we were playing Black Sabbath and. Um, Led Zeppelin, Hendrix, and all that. And my older brother, too, he's pretty much the one that introduced us to, you know, metal. Uh, uh, we just we just thought, like, you know, let's have an all-girl band. Let's, this is what we need to do uh, after we saw Fanny. And uh, um, I said, you know, do you want to play bass or, or drums? Because at that point, I was already taking classical guitar lessons, and I knew I was going to go into rock. And she says, give me a couple of days to think about it. And a couple of days later, she says, I, I'm going to take drum lessons. So, you know, we, we already knew we had to learn our instruments and, and lead up into that point of being able to play rock. So That's it went. And, and at the same time, though, we were still playing classical music because we were in school. So it was classical, okay. symphonic, um, you know, uh, it, it, we were doing both. It was just music all the time and, and at the Petrucci home. Everybody played instruments. Right. They were all practicing. You heard music. everything. That's awesome. Now, did your brother play, yeah. play anything as well? or Did who? Your brother. Oh, yeah, my brother Remo. Yeah, he played uh, saxophone, clarinet, flute. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. You got all the yeah. pieces covered there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No kidding. I know. We 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 did a little bit of some uh wedding band stuff too. Play at weddings oh, really? while we were still like preteens. It it was awesome. So I, so I guess we that we was did like so much. The, that was like the precursor band to to kick off before things went into uh the outrageous Madame X. Oh yeah, uh, that came definitely after. Well, uh, by then in our high school years we had our um all girl band Panther Girl which turned into Black Lace and uh, we were already starting some gigs with that, 
And uh, then the other two sisters that were in the band, Denise Latrell and Laura Latrell, they decided that they they weren't going to take that road of music. And uh, we ended up hiring a couple different, you know, a couple guys, and that became Black Lace. And then Chris came along and and uh, hired him on bass. And then we knew we needed a, a kick-ass singer. Uh, we were already touring with this other singer at the time. It wasn't Madame X. It was Black Lace. It was Roxy, myself, and Chris. And okay. a singer, his name was uh, John or what, what, Jamie. And uh, we decided to hit the road. We'd go to New York, um, Long Island, where Brett lived, and his band, I think it was called Cheetah, they opened up for us. And, you know, we thought, oh, my God, that's the guy. That's <laughs> exactly the guy. We We knew. We all knew without even talking to each other. We knew that was the guy. That's it was awesome. it was destiny fate, and you know we ended up talking to Brett, and he knew we were the, the his band, and then we took you know we hired him and let our singer go back home and uh, lived out in Connecticut for a while, put the in a big band house, put this this whole Man M X thing together and and hit the road. It was a good solid two years from the East Coast, Midwest, um, wow. through Texas to up until California, where we end up getting signed. Now, what, so there's just, were, there's just so much stuff in between. I, you know, I could be skipped. <laughs> I don't know. I just I I just so much. And 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 from that time till now, and everything that all the changes, there's so much. It's hard for me to bring up every detail. And it sounds like Chris and Brett probably did. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, yeah, they brought up a lot, but hey, don't don't even worry about them. You bring up whatever you yeah. want to bring up, and you know, okay, whatever. Um, now, when you guys were still Black Lace, was the image similar to what Madame X would become? It was starting to, yeah. We had kind of the, uh, it was called a rooster type haircut. Okay. Uh, where it's kind of like a mullet, and you and you and you uh, rat the top. Okay. You know, it, yeah. So it, we were already starting to do that, and then with Madame X and Brett already had a, a ton of curly hair. You don't, you didn't even have to rat that. <laughs> uh, it was just so much, and uh, so we were ra- starting to rat our hair and go with the crazy big hair. We wanted to be bigger than life, get right. the crazy costumes, and uh, I, well, you know, we felt that way at the time, and we did what we felt. So uh, yeah, we the image was very important, and the music was very important to us at the time. And you know, we're really young, so we did the best that we could with both image and with music. Right. Yeah. And then uh, well, you guys, like you said, like you guys were touring around, and um, then you guys ended up in California. Yeah, we worked our way to California. Yeah, right. We decided that we had honed in, you know, on what we were doing. Like we knew what our image was. We had some uh, we thought were you know really great originals. And at, at that time, there's really no internet, and you had to be seen by labels. And going to California was was what to do at that time. Sure. So we thought we were ready to be seen. We had our semi-tractor trailer truck, our huge PA system, our huge light system. We had our crew. We had our we 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 felt like we had it together. We knew we had to have it together before we hit California to get signed. That was a plan. We weren't going to leave until we got signed. Well, and we did. We ended up there, and we ended up uh, getting signed like, almost right away. You know, it was so quick. Like, didn't you just play, like, one or two shows and and, and you guys... Yeah, we uh, did, like, Madame Wong's uh, the first night. I can't... I don't remember. I think that was it, like, the, our first gig. Because it's, uh, an agent was at that gig. Hardly anybody was there. And I think her name was Lucy Forbes, something like that. And she says, you have to go to the Rainbow Bar and Grill. And we says, all right, well, we'll change. Like, put our jeans on. And she goes, oh, no, no, no. Stay like you are. This is for all rock bands. They all come in looking, you know, they they live that way. They show up the way that you guys are are right now. And we go, oh, okay, <laughs> we're comfortable with that. But so it ends up when we show up and we were the most outrageous, most, I just, ever, the whole place stared us down. They, it's like, what is this? And we're like, what? You know, come on. <laughs> and that's when... Uh, Bob Street, who worked for Jet Records, came up to us and said, who are you guys? And we told him who we were. And he says, do you have like a promo pack? I, I, I work for Don Arden from Jet Records, and I like to give him, you know, your resume, promo pack, whatever else you have. And we said, sure. And I uh, gave him the resume, pro- promo pack, and then we got a phone call. They wanted to know what hotel we were staying at. 
and they said, where are you playing next? And we said, uh, the Troubadour. And uh, they made an arrangement to, you know, come and see us there. And he saw this, Don was there and other Jet guys, and they loved it. They just thought it was the best thing at the time. And uh, and that's where we I got signed and wrecked our lives. <laughs> <laughs> we, we should have oh, probably that's... waited a little bit. <laughs> but, you know, so, oh, that's too funny. That's probably too funny. wasn't a, a really good idea to jump into that one right away. <laughs> but you know yeah. you're young and and you think you know we're we're from Michigan and New York and we're real you know we're suburban kids we really didn't live like like uh you know these ramp guys do we weren't really street we went to school right. all of us had education all that we weren't rich but we were educated and we did everything the right way and like any middle class you just you have to work hard to get to where you want to be and that's all we knew so it's like okay we're going to work really hard at metal and make it metal you know, so uh, we just thought we got to that point. We didn't really understand how how big the industry was in California, how, how many were doing it. We didn't know it was just like thousands upon thousands because there was no way of knowing. There was no Internet. Sure. You couldn't Google it and find out. <laughs> so, you know, it was, it's like it was a dream come true. We thought we were really lucky. You know, he had Black Sabbath, um, Air Supply. I'm talking about Don Arden. Um, right. And, you know, and it's like, well, this is it. If he has them, you know, we're really lucky. Sure. So we went for it, you know, and then we got screwed. That's just how it went. <laughs> but you live and learn, you know, live and learn, and there's a reason for all that, and we learn from it. And I think uh, at this point where we all became even better at what we do is because of that, of going through hard times. Nothing was easy for us. Sure. So going through hard times usually makes you better. And I so there is a reason for all that and I see that now. So it, it it's funny what you see years later. <laughs> yeah. Well we're like we're as old as our parents looking at the kids like, You couldn't see that, you didn't know what's wrong <laughs> with you. <laughs> you know? And I find myself saying that, you know, to my uh, younger self from thirty years ago. You couldn't see that. You didn't know. You couldn't just lay back and wait for you know more things to happen. You know. Right. So I. I you know, what's that? Uh, no, uh, actually, I was going to say. You know, I was one of like uh, growing up at that time. Like, I guess when your mm -hmm. when your guys' uh, album came out, I was like fourteen years old, and I was one of yeah. the kids growing up. You know, that mm -hmm. wanted to be you guys. So like all through cool. the 80s and part of the 90s, you know, I was playing guitar, wanting to be you guys, trying to chase the dream and all. But then like, you know, obviously mm -hmm. I didn't do nothing with it. But, you know, years later, I look back and I say mm -hmm. to myself, like, I'm kind of happy like I didn't like get to that point because I think I would have ruined my life even worse. <laughs> right. And you're and you're doing other other things in music like this, like what you're doing yeah. now, which is yeah. awesome. So you, yeah. you find your way somehow. Right. Exactly, exactly. Yeah, and we all ended up uh, going on and doing other things, too, a little bit after, you know, musically and other things, but, you know, you just live. You live your life. Right. And now here we are again, and I think we're much better in um, doing, uh, you know, the new album. And actually, right now, it's hard for me to concentrate because I have so much on my mind for this album, and I've been recording, and, like, tomorrow I go in and record uh, my mind is really on uh, the music and the notes and making great music. So everything else in my life right now is almost a distraction because my mind immediately goes into like, okay, I need to rewrite the the solo part underneath. You know, it, you know, <laughs> things like that at all times. Does, does so it, keep it you just doesn't at stop. Night? Yeah, because as soon as I lay down, I I'm playing parts in my mind so I don't forget before I go into the studio the next day. And thinking like, okay, maybe I should add this or take that away, or you know, yeah, it just you know, musical thoughts. It doesn't right. go away. So and that's yeah. and I've been doing that everywhere, <laughs> right? Recently. <laughs> so well, it's well, good though. Think. I'm lucky. I'm lucky that I can still, you know, think music, do music at any right. level. So I, I just think I'm lucky. Well, like like you said, I mean, it's like what thirty years later now, and you guys are. Getting, you've gotten back together. You've done some shows. You released a single. Yeah. Uh, like, did you ever think any of this would happen? No, <laughs> I didn't. 
No, it, actually, the reason it did happen was it's actually Roxy's fault. <laughs> she, oh God, is this about oh, about a year and a half ago now? When she did that, um, what's that called in England? Some kind of a, a music. Uh, I can't remember what it was called. I can't think it right now. But okay. she did that with her JSRG, which was Vixen without Jan. Right. And then they were they were going. Later, they were supposed to join up with Jan. They were, you know, how they have they had their politics going on. Uh-huh. But she said when they were signing everything there in England, there were so many Madame X fans and asking if if we would ever get back together and release anything. And and they had merchandise for her to su- to sign of Madame X, you know, records, T-shirts, or what have you. So she thought, like, geez, we should just do at least one song just for the fans. And um, you know, and she threw it by me when she got home, and I go, well, let me think about it. Well, this is all like, I don't know, September, I, I don't know what the date was, but um, all I remember then, uh, Jan passed away uh, okay. shortly after, their guitar player. Right. And and, uh, and it really hit me, and I thought, man, she's just so, she was young, she was tall and beautiful, and she looked so healthy, and it happened to her. Right. And so I thought, like, this could happen to any one of us. So I just feel I kind of hold Jan responsible for making this happen, too, because I thought, oh, my God, you know, we're at that age where anything could happen. So I thought, just uh, swallow my pride, my attitude, and everything towards that, and, uh, you know, let's do a song. And then we started to get to work on it. You know, we call Brett and get Chris on board, and and then I announced it on in, on Facebook. And then Johans Lindstrom from the Sweden Rock Festival messaged me and said, is this uh, true about the Madame X? And I said, yes. And he says, is it all original members? And I said, yes. And he goes, well, would you guys like to play Sweden Rock Festival? And I said, yes. <laughs> no, I, I, I said, let me talk to the guys in the band. I, I You know, make sure, because everybody's far apart. Sure. And, of course, everybody was on board. It, it was a real exciting, like, oh, good. You know, this is cool. You know, we have some reason to come together, and this is exciting. It is. It's exciting at this point. Absolutely. So uh, everybody had, you know, that same youthful, great attitude, let's go, let's do it. And we did, and, and it went over really well. And uh, and I know we have more dates and more things coming up, but most important is right now is to do this album that we're all excited about, obviously, and, and go from there. At least we'll have another uh, great piece of work from Adam X, no matter what happens. Whether it does anything or not, it doesn't matter. We'll have written our second book as far as Madam X goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, the, well writing music and having an there. album is like any like anybody, right? Like writing a book, you sure. it's an accomplishment of all your works. You know, so it's awesome. The, the, the song you guys We're have out lucky. there now, uh, another '80s rock song. I mean, it's a great song. Yeah, and it really is. Yeah, but it's not, you know, we don't have a label or anything, so we don't have, like, you know, like Sharon Osbourne behind us and, you know, threatening everybody to play the record or else. <laughs> you know, we don't have that going on. So, you know, we're we're kind of lost in the mix with everybody else that uh, has the same venue of being able to be on the Internet and YouTube and all that and, and fight to get noticed. So, right. I don't know. But I think doing these future dates that are coming up will help us a lot to the whole exposure of it, and uh, and we'll have fun doing it. So uh, hopefully people will will hear it and like it and go from there. Do you think it's um Do you think it's tougher now or back in the eighties, like where it was you know bands had to fight and struggle to get noticed and get a record deal and then. Uh, try to get success after that and really put the work in after their sign? Or do you think it's harder now where it's actually pretty easy to record, make music, get your product out there, but it's hard mm-hmm. to actually get the attention of everybody to get noticed? Well, you just answered it. <laughs> That's exactly <laughs> right. Well, the thing in the 80s is that we didn't know, which helps a lot. We didn't know that the whole world wanted to do it. You right. couldn't look it up to see that everybody wanted to do it. So you're so hungry for it, and you feel like you're one of the few. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like not so many people, you know, they're not going to do this. They're not going to give up their lives to put everything into being on the road and living on the road. You know, it's like gypsies. 
and working our way to California like for two years, nobody will do it with the semi tra trailer truck crew. All, all that you have to put up with being on the road, there's so much more to it. There's a lot of detail, a lot of ups and downs. And so you think, like, there, hardly anybody would do that, which is as far as um, making you do this, um, just having that that feeling like, you know, we're doing this, not many people are doing it, we're going to make it, makes you make it. Right. <laughs> right. But now, um, you're right, it's a lot easier to record uh, you don't need everybody in the same room to record anymore. You do your part. They come in. There's a click track. They follow it, which is great. Mm -hmm. You know, everything else is, you know, the whole Pro Tools thing, it makes it so much easier, faster, uh, less expensive, and it actually sounds better. I mean, you're still using your amps and everything. You're getting sure. better sound. It goes on, et cetera, et cetera. But um, the thing is that you know that the whole world at this point is trying to do the same thing just by watching YouTube and everything, mm -hmm. TV, everything. Right. It's so out there. So it's like, oh, gosh, well, <laughs> you know, the whole world is trying to do this, but uh, that's what kind of, you know, makes you think like, oh, it's going to be hard to stick out in this. But we still do it, I mean, because you love it. Sure. So either way, even back then, we loved it so much, and we went through, you know, the road, which is a lot tougher because you're living on it. And this way, you're not, you can do it all um, through the computer, you know, computer or Internet way. And you don't even really have to hit the road to get to do the recording and get uh, noticed, you know, with videos right. and and pictures and interviews and everything. It cuts a lot of that time out. You, you don't have to do that. But still, you know, it's it's hard because there's so much out there, a lot more, sure. and we and we all know it. Do you so and it's easy yourself? for everybody to download songs. You know, I get it. I see it all. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think to yourself that maybe you guys were like 30 years ahead of your time? Um, I definitely think we were ahead of our time. I do. Uh, I, and I, the reason being is that we wanted it so bad and we wanted it to be bigger than life. So you're, you're uh, a step forward from what's going on at all times in, in that sense. Um, I just feel that we were um, being controlled like by Don, by Don Arden and, you know, right. whoever they, you know, any, they, they would tell us to cool it. Like even with my guitar playing, don't do all that crazy stuff. Don't, don't, no, 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 no. You know, it was always a big no. So it's kind of a bummer because, right. they, you know, they wanted it more poppy and cutesy and, sure. and they were holding us back from what we really were. And nowadays there's nobody to say hold back. It doesn't even matter anymore. Because it's so everything's so out there, you really can do whatever you want. Right. So, so I feel like we we're doing whatever we want, and I think when you do whatever you want, you might sound different, <laughs> which helps. Sure. Right. You you don't want to hear all the same bands, so no, no, everybody's right. sounding like the same band. So I mean that's what I did with my solo band, uh, Maxine. I did uh, just whatever I wanted, and everybody. I know they liked it, and they said she's definitely doing whatever she wants. <laughs> and I found that as a compliment, not yeah, being like told was, what to do. When I was going back and like listening to songs off of those albums and the videos on YouTube and all, I, I was like, mm -hmm. "Wow, like she can wail." Like, and and now that you say like that, Don held you back. I mean, mm -hmm. how frustrating was that for you as a guitar player? Oh God, it was horrible. It was, you know, he even said. If she doesn't do this or that or that, he says to Rick Derringer, you can do it. And I looked at Rick Derringer and gave him a look like, I'm going to kill you if you, <laughs> if you think about recording. So, but I, you know, I did like all my guitar parts at that time in like, God, like three, four days. They hurried us through and then I found out the reason is because we got that big advance from CBS. And I think the quicker they got us through that studio... Don could hang on to the money, and I don't mean to. I don't want to cry about it, but I, I see all that right. now. You know, right. it's it's over. You know, you live and learn. I think <laughs> we needed more time so we could just, uh, you know, live with the record. And and you know, they hurried Rick Derringer through it too. It wasn't right. fair to him. He got frustrated too. And and then Don's reasoning at the time was, uh, if you have a great song, uh, doesn't matter what it sounds like. He thought production <laughs> and all that didn't make a difference. But it does. Sure. Every band cares about, you know, producing and, and production. It does make a difference. 
things have to sound good. Yeah. So I, I, I guess he was totally old school. So if he was in his 60s back in the 80s, yeah, he, he knows the whole vaudeville thing. <laughs> so, so I guess he really wouldn't know in that sense. <laughs> right? I don't know. I, I didn't even understand it back then. I thought production and producing meant a lot to, to bring yeah. the song across. Don't don't rush the band and, and make it sound one-dimensional. I, I felt like we lost dimension. You know, it just sounded one-dimensional. But... Um, and, and right now, by the way, we're fixing all that. <laughs> I'm already re-recording over that the old album, so we're all kind of redoing it, and, we'll, and we will re-release it. I don't know if Chris or Brett told you that. Yeah, actually, Chris did, I, and, that, and that's awesome. Yeah. So, the, the original one, were you happy with the way mm-hmm. it turned out, or are you more excited to be redoing it to have it sound the way you guys want it to? Well, the, we don't have the masters. We don't know okay. who has the masters. Um, so Kevin Sharp, who's, you know, engineering and producing right now, our, our new album at Metro 37 Studios, he and Chris were working on a way to, so I, I don't know technically how to describe it, but they knew how, they, they know how to bring out the drums and do different things. And they had me coming in and redoing my guitars for the album. So I did it the way I would pretty much do it now that still work with the old guitar. So the old guitars are sounding like a background rhythm at this point. Gotcha. And and then what the thing is, is I'm doubling those leads. The ones that okay. pretty much I already did on High in High School, We Reserve the Right, Come On, Come All, um, Metal My Veins. I'm leaving something out right now. Oh, She's Hot Tonight. I doubled those okay. leads like exactly like I did it, like I played it back then. Now, that's not so bad for an old lady, is it? <laughs> <laughs> to be able to do that, I doubled it, and it's got the energy and everything. So I, I was pretty excited about that, and it's going to sound so much better. And it's, it doesn't matter if it sells or not. The point is, is it's going to sound so much better. So the, the people that do love that album, um, if they decide to uh, um, you know, get the new remake of that album, they're going to be so much happier. So It sounds so much better already. And, 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 day, and it I gives me some satisfaction. Yeah. I what? Was say that. I think you guys will be even happier at the end of the day, too, with it. Oh, yeah. I, I'm already happier. I already know the uh, drums are a lot better. They sound better. And now adding the guitar is just so much better. So, now, yeah. Like, with you and your sister, did you guys get a lot of flack for being, like, females in the rock band or... Uh, from the crowd, from people in the business, other bands? Yeah. In the beginning, it really was like that. It was hard to be taken serious. I I don't know why. They just didn't picture girls wanting to play that, you know, hard rock metal. Right. And uh, we'd have, like, I'd have guys in the audience that would run around trying to see if I was really playing or if somebody was hiding behind my amps or if I was really plugged in. <laughs> and and they make fools out of themselves. It's like, God, that looks stupid. Why is that guy running around check you know, why are they letting him on the stage? You know? And things like that would happen. And then a couple times wow. uh you know, they would say, Those those aren't really girls, they're transvestites, you know. <laughs> so, you know, so we heard it all. That's a new one. It's just crazy. Yeah, it's just crazy. But uh yeah, it, it like the girls that are out now, they don't they're not hearing any of that. It's like uh, now it's expected from them. Right. You know, they are, just are get you to walk in and be cool. Are you surprised by that? Like how it's turned? Like how there's so many women in rock and metal today? Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I, you know, due to the internet where you can just um, learn how to play any solo, it's right there. Um, they can just work on a solo forever or a song forever. It's all, all the information's there. When we were learning covers, None of that was out there. We had to put a tape on, and we had to keep going over it until we could find the notes. So we were developing our ear, right. ears and technique and everything by forcing ourselves to have to listen and figure it out. We had to figure it out. It wasn't shown to us. So right. I'm, I am so not used to things being shown to me as far as, you know, rock and roll. As far as doing classical and all that, we had music in front of us. So, you know, it was one of those type, you know, read the music and do it. But rock and roll, nobody would show it to us. It's figure it out, put a tape on, and work it out. Wow. And now they have all these instructional this, and they show <laughs> you everything. You can't go wrong. You know, you can't go wrong. It's a lot easier. 
And, you know, I talked to Patty Quattro from the uh, Quattro Sisters, you know, that she was uh-huh. an all-girl band called Cradle. Okay. Um, they were pretty much one of the first all-girl rock bands along with Fanny. And she she was telling me how impossible and hard it was for them. And they're 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 from, like, the later 60s going into the 70s. So, okay. God, I can't even imagine wow. what it was like for them. It was hard for us, but... But still, we prevailed because it was in our hearts and we wanted to do it and we loved it. It's like, you're not going to take away something that we love doing. It's just music. Right. You know? Well, yeah, it that, is. The, the whole thing with YouTube is kind of, uh, I mean, you can learn anything you need to learn to do. I know. I mean, it's amazing. <laughs> I know. And now you're seeing five-year-olds and six- and seven-year-olds playing incredible guitar or drums, both girls and boys. Because it's all worked out. It's so worked out. And, and I know that just from, uh, you know, when I was 12 and, and playing Malaguena on my classical guitar, I had to work it out before I went to competition. So at, like, at age 12, it sounded, I sounded super professional perfect because I practiced it. I had a teacher, and, um, I, you know, I worked it out. And that's kind of what I think is going on. I think with all these kids, I think it's so... It's all worked out. It has to be. Because how can like a four or five or six year old, you know, have, you know, rock and roll is a feeling. <laughs> you have to live with that. <laughs> and it comes through your playing. And, and I, I just don't understand how they could feel it at such a uh, tiny little age. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> <laughs> There's just no way. It's just, it's all perfect, perfected. They're little yeah. sponges, they're taught. And then they they perform it, and it's on YouTube, and it's incredible, and it, and it is incredible, but it's just bizarre. I I, I don't know how to take that yeah. in, but it, it, you know. It's a yeah. I mean, there's a band. Uh, they're out of the New York area, and they're uh, mm-hmm. they're called Giffords Lane. And the the father of one of the kids owns like a, one of them rock schools. And oh yeah. The band. <laughs> and I saw them open for Quiet Riot at like an arena football game and I was blown away. They're like twelve and thirteen years old. And See? they're like Yeah, and, and they were instead of like, Yeah, we just released our new single and it's available on C D blah blah blah. It's like we released our new single on YouTube and we had three million views. And I, I turned to my wow. wife, I'm like, Are you kidding me? Like how is this happening? <laughs> yeah, that's I agree with you. It's how was that happening, right? So so what do you do with that? I don't know. You know, I, I don't know. It seems like it's all over the place. That's why I said there's the venue is so huge now with everybody doing it. At every every girl, every guy, at any age. Uh, I don't know. So yeah. and then again, that kind of reminds me of what Don Arden said from Jet Records. Mm-hmm. He said you could be the best player, of this, the best that, look the best, doesn't matter. He says it all comes down to the song. He goes either you have a great song or you don't. Right. He said oh, it's a you. song, no matter. I guess he was right to a point then, huh? Well, yeah. Yeah, he is. <laughs> so I, it is, that part is true. You really do have to, well, ask the Beatles. They always had the song. <laughs> yeah, right. They definitely, every, just about every song is a hit. Yeah, so, yeah. Now, how, how about when you guys um, started going through, like, lineup changes? Uh, you know, when Brett left and then your sister left. Mm-hmm. Did you um, Did you take it personal, especially with your sister leaving? Were you upset by it? No, because at that time, Jet Records was going through some tax evasion, or I don't even really remember, and they were closing their doors. And uh, at that point, I think the Vixen girls came up and said they'd like to get Roxy to play, and it was like, yeah, go for it, go, go, go. And Brett decided to go with his brother uh, in Kaiser, and it was, yeah, you know, go, go, go. And, uh, And then Chris and I decided to continue Madame X. You know, and and we were still young. It was this is all happening fast, right? And uh, and you you know you still think like, well, we're just going to keep doing it, and you know we'll get a great singer, and we'll do this, and we'll go play, and we'll do the same thing. You know, it's right. still in the eighties, so and that's when uh, Sebastian came along at that point. So you know, it's it's funny one, and it's crazy because like. I remember when all this was happening back in my teen days, and mm-hmm. the question, and I wanted to ask. You or your sister this question for years, and it's funny, mm-hmm. and now I get the chance. Mm-hmm. Was there ever a chance back then at that point where you could have went with Roxy 
and been in Vincent as well, or did she try to get you? Like, I always felt like, in my head, I was like, wow, she left her sister behind. What is she doing? No, I think she kind of had some hard feelings anyway from all that, uh, everything going on. She was squeaked. We call it squeaked. Uh, <laughs> and she was pretty much hired into it, and they all became, you know, they got closer and end up, uh, they, I think they had Pia, uh, Steve Vai's wife, on base, and they end up going getting share after and things were happening for them. She just went okay. a different direction. And uh, I never asked her to be in Vixen. She never asked me to be in Vixen as far as guitar playing at that time. Gotcha. And and I wanted to do Madam X. I always loved the Madam X thing. And I wanted to uh, get heavier, if anything. I wanted, to, I wanted to be really heavy. I didn't really, yeah. you know, I wasn't really for the poppy thing, you know, more, I shouldn't say poppy, though. I don't know. It was just that it didn't give me a boner at all. No. <laughs> I, I, I didn't want to do, I didn't want that. I wanted to put, play heavy and, and go crazy. I wanted more crazy. Like, let's get crazy. And, and uh, you, you, you can really tell by, like, your your solo stuff because you do that. Like, you <laughs> you, you turn it up, you're, you're playing heavy, and, you're, you know, you're playing a, a bunch of notes all over the place and these wailing guitar solos. And I said that to myself. I'm like, obviously, <laughs> she, like, didn't want to go for the, the poppy or rock of Vixen. She yeah. Wanted to be, yeah. Yeah, well, and, and I was never asked anyway, so I didn't have to even think about it. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I mean, really. <laughs> and, um, God, there's so much even after that even with Sebastian and all that. But Brett doesn't really like it when we talk about Sebastian. He actually talks so, a lot about Sebastian himself. Well, I, no, I know. I know that he likes him and all that. But as far as, like, with the Madam X thing, he likes to keep it true to what it was. And I don't blame him. Right. You know, everything else, we all went off and did other things. And he doesn't throw in anything else. And. He he kind of expects that from us, like, you know, let's keep it true to what we were and what we did. You know, don't right. forget. So it's like, yeah, but still the history is this is what happened, and he came in, and we can't help what had happened to him. Sure. So, you know, you never you don't know the future at that time. You know, we, we didn't know he was going to end up becoming huge. You don't right. know that. So the way things turn out, there is a reason for everything. But it's as though we're all even with Sebastian, and everybody's all coming back together and and more adult about everything and everybody's forgiving each other for, you know, hard feelings for uh, being so true to the metal that we, we forget about each person being a human being. Doesn't You know, at that time you're like, I don't care if I hurt your feelings, do the fucking job, get it done right. <laughs> right, right. Just do it. You know, be great, we don't have time. You know, <laughs> no, playing no games, right. just get it right. You know, I mean, even right now, it's like I'll say, with, with recording, I'll say to Roxy, uh, do you think you could play more notes? Can, can you do a little bit more? And she's like, this, this is not Maxine Band. <laughs> you know, it's a song, you know, she'll remind me. And I'm like, well, can you play a little bit more? <laughs> you know? Oh, that's so, funny. yeah, you know, things like that. So, and I'm so, I've been always accused of overplaying, so I, I'm sure... You know, after some of this stuff that I'm doing, everybody is going to say, can you kind of t tune it, tone it down? <laughs> you know, and it's like, no, let's just do it. Let's get crazy. Make it make it what we are. You no, know, metal. No. When we play live, we're all over the place and crazy, and that's what it should be when we record, too. Just, right, I don't absolutely. mean, you know, a mess. I mean, don't be afraid to, to, to do what you do live. Right. Yeah. You know, don't don't lay back at, just because you're recording. Put that energy out there. Uh, so. You know, that's the biggest part, of, and I don't care what genre of music you play. Mm -hmm. When you can hear and feel that emotion, whether it's a instrument being played or a voice being sung, that's what makes the music right there. Exactly, because you're feeling what they feel. Right. And, and you need that feeling. You can't just say, well, I'm going to just be a machine and get through the song right now. You know, right. I'll just do right. this. You can't think like that because that's it erases the song. Nobody will care. If you don't care, they won't care because they'll hear it. Sure. You know, that Absolutely. that's the whole God, you just nailed it right there. That's it. Absolutely. You have to feel it. The feeling has to be there. You can't just like you know, or like well, I'm Sebastian Bach and I'm singing it, so I don't have to try, you know. Right. You know, you can't do that. 
doesn't matter who you are, you have to try your best. And it's for the song, it's for the people. It's what it's all about. Just like when you were young, the reason you got signed is because you did, you tried so hard and you put everything you get in, you got into it. Right. So, yeah, you can't just all of a sudden say, well, I'm a big star now. You're lucky that I'm just there. Here it goes. Bye. You got your part. Bye. You can't do that. Nah. You know, you can't do that. It doesn't lend to the song. It doesn't lend to the to the listener. It does not work. Nope. So you have to nope. always keep trying. You have to work. Do do your best or to anybody that's out there. You just do your best. You don't have to be Ingve on guitar. You just do your best. Absolutely. Now, and, and, and it'll and it'll thing? show if you care. Wow, big time, big time. It always shows, mm-hmm. and it shows if you don't care as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> right. Now, the, the whole thing with uh, Sebastian, uh, when we talked to Chris, he was really, really beating himself up on the whole thing, on the way he treated him. Did you think that Chris maybe went too far with it? or No, I don't. And I'll tell you why I remember. He... Um, First of all, Sebastian would say things like, you know, what, what, what we would say to Sebastian was, you know, you're 18, 19, um, Madame X, they expect us at a certain level, and he wanted to do it really bad. And we said, we don't have time to wait for you to to be green. Right. So you're, we have to take you under. We're going to show you how to do interviews. We're going to show you how to perform on stage. We're, we were teaching him. We were teachers. Sure. And I, I don't know about you, but when I took lessons, our, my teachers were strict, and if it sucked, they let us know it sucked. And and if you did something wrong, I, I would get my finger slapped with a pencil or a pen. So, and here I'm I'm like a kid. So, am I going to say you were brutal? You you wrecked my life? No, it, it's just part of 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 learning to be good, you know. So, um, you know, he even Sebastian and we would explain it to him. And he says, okay, okay, if I'm out of tune. You know, you know, punch me or spit on me, and I'll know. I'll know. And we're like, okay, <laughs> sure. <laughs> so we're on stage, and he'd go out of tune, and and then he and Chris would like sucker punch him. It's like a sucker punch. And then, or he'd um, go out of tune, and he and he'd throw and he'd spit at him. Which you know what? It kind of makes it more metal. <laughs> it's actually cool yeah, exactly. if you think about it. It's cool. Yeah, it's been good. So. <laughs> Yeah, so I I didn't know. Well, maybe I guess because he was like what eighteen or nineteen. I guess, I guess it just you know he said it's okay, but then at the same time it's not okay. So it, it hurt him. I guess it hurt him to if he was sucking and we let him know he was sucking. It, it hurt him a lot. So I guess we owe him the apology. We need to apologize to him to let him know that we knew that he sucked. <laughs> so right. sorry, but you know it made him better. You know, if you think about it, he was actually trained at that point to to getting into Skid Row and everything else he he's been doing. So he he was taught well. You guys, you, know, you have to have that. Mold. You guys, molded. right? So actually, instead of like crying about it, he should be saying, you know, thank you, thank you for spitting or punching me, and um, thank you for being hard on me, right? Because that made me better so I was in Skid Row and I did this on um, Saturday Night Live I did all this and that and that it all led into him um, becoming who he is today so it should be more of a thank you instead of crying so I don't understand this Sebastian and Chris crying over these emotional you know and they're not even girls (laughs) so they're acting like really girly like a divorce or something and I don't I don't understand that yeah, so. I, I, I'm like I, I was really surprised. Like he, he, I mean, he really he he took it hard, Chris, and he was really genuinely upset by the whole thing. And he was telling, he's like, "This is going on for you know twenty something odd years. This has really bothered me." And he said they hadn't talked in years, and he actually just mm-hmm. saw him a few weeks ago, and he said they mm-hmm. talked all night long about. it. He said they were sitting there crying together and talking about. Yeah, it. he told me that too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> first, I I. To me, that kind of squeaks me. I think that's ridiculous. It's like you had to do what you had to do at the time, and everybody understood. Nobody got beat or left behind or nothing. It was just do what you had to do. It was it was all business, you know. And 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 he was. I know he's young and impressionable, but so were we. And then when I was right. learning, and I got hit with pencils and 
and told I was shitty and I had to go work harder. When I'm like 12 or 13, I wasn't crying. It, to me, it was like, oh, God, you know, yeah, I have, to, I have to get better. I have to get better. If you're really serious about what you're doing, you take it in and, and, and then you work on it. Right. So I, I don't understand it. That's, I guess, you know, when you go to school and you take lessons, you're taught. You're taught to do these. If you don't go to school and you don't take lessons, you don't understand the recipe of, of trying to be a great musician. So I, I, to me, it's like, well, you know, you didn't go to school. You didn't learn this. You didn't have teachers. So, you know, I guess, I guess we were the bad guys because we were trying to be your school and your teachers. You know, it, it, it was just too bad that it had to happen when you're like 19. It should have happened to him when he was like 12 or 13. And he should have been taking lessons, and and he probably would even be that much better now. Right. You know what I'm talking about? I mean, really, like he wouldn't, he wouldn't lose his voice on the third song if you know, because you're taught endurance and everything. Sure. So yeah. I, I, I just, I just know all these things, and I can't help it. I know it. So when everybody's talking about crying and apologizing, it's like, no, that's the way it is. If you want to make it in the business, and and you're not Sharon Osbourne's daughter or son, you're going to have to really work really hard and 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 you know t t just take it in take in all the negativity and and the insults and everything because it's going to be that way if you want to get to that level because who are we we're nobody's right. uh you know son or daughter that's in the business so it, it's just the way it is it should be a big thank you it was hard but it was all worth it thank you not way 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 you hurt my feeling i was a child so you weren't a child. There's there's people that go to war when they're 18 and 19. You know, they're already they're they're in, they're in Vietnam or or Desert Storm or whatever. Any of these wars, and they're at that that age. And I don't hear them crying. So it you like, know, it it's like, just ridiculous. I can't help it. it. Like, it's ridiculous it, to me. <laughs> it sounds like you run a tight ship. <laughs> Well, I I don't know the best that I can. It's hard to get everybody to listen because everybody wants to do what they want to do. So, I guess my myself, I just know I want to be really good. At least I, I'll have my part great. <laughs> right. Uh, this is true. This is true. Yeah. <laughs> so then the, the the band dissolved. The Sebastian version with the band uh, ended up uh, breaking up. What, what were your right. plans after the band broke up? Well, at that point, I think we we tried an, another singer, so and and the chemistry wasn't there. It didn't it didn't matter. It's just the, how good they were at that point. It was the chemistry wasn't happening, and that's when we got a bar up north and and ran a business and had all these bands. At, um, I don't. Did Chris tell you about that part? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, then now you know all that. <laughs> <laughs> and and we. Went through all that and and had an in-house band there, Doctor Bone, and and we would sit in with the bands and then we would open up for all these national acts that we had coming in. It was like the we were doing the same thing, but we owned the bar. So, okay, we went through that. Well, he told you all that, so I don't have to go through that, right? Yeah, yeah. Actually, I didn't know you were involved with that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> really? He didn't tell you that? Oh, okay. He didn't tell well, me that part, yeah. Oh, well, it's okay. I was. <laughs> <laughs> Did he act like he owned it himself? <laughs> that's that's the, nice. the one I thought. Yeah, I thought... It, oh, call him yeah. back. <laughs> <laughs> call him back. He said, that yeah, was from that like was... 1990, 91, 1991 until 1998. Okay. For me. So, yeah. So, so what did you do after that? Uh, and then uh, that's when I started to, you know, I did the Vixen um, Tangerine album. I wasn't on it. Uh, okay. Roxy said she needed a bass player if I would play bass because they were going to hit the road and tour. And I said, well, I don't really play bass. And she says, if you play guitar, you can play bass. You <laughs> know, it was one of those <laughs> things. I said, I, okay, you're right. <laughs> so I picked up the bass and I learned the whole Tangerine album and some of the other Vixen things. And, um hit the road with them just to give myself something to do. Uh, I, I just needed a change at that time and to right. gather my thoughts and start all over and decide what I was going to do from that point on. So, you know, and I did that, and then I ended up uh, starting my own vaccine band. 
and that's you know with Titania and Roxy played all the drums on that album. That was in by the time that came out, that was twenty five uh, two thousand five. Okay. And then the Don't Hate Me, which was two thousand eight, and then uh, Back to the Garden, which was twenty thirteen. And nice. now we got the Madam X going on. And as soon as I'm done with the Madam X album, I I'm going into the studio to uh, do the Maxine album. So, but you also uh, sing in that band too. Yeah, but I uh, on this next album, I'll have like maybe two or three songs where I sing. But I'm having Rachel May. She's my uh, rhythm guitar player singer. I'm going to have her sing because she's got a really uh, she's like a female Dio. So I thought oh, wow. I needed to take it up another notch. You know, discovering how great her voice was, I'm I'm like, oh, my God, you're heavier and cooler, you know, vocally than I am. I'm more like a Getty Lee. I'm, you know, I'm kind of there. And I thought she, it would just uh, lend more to the music if she does more of the lead singing. You know, and I'll do backups and all that, and I'll still be writing and all the guitars and stuff, but that's the plan. Nice. But I'm kind of waiting for that because I need to put all my efforts into the, the Madam X because I have to live that while I'm recording. I have to live Madam X. And then I'll do the Maxine. And the reason being why I'm doing both is a lot of people now, as you can see, there isn't that much work for everybody. So you need to be in more than one project right. to keep playing and, and to keep, you know, otherwise you get really rusty and, and you could lose interest and you have to keep going. So you do what you need to do to keep going, and it's fun, you know. So, yeah. I, I mean, I, I see, you know, it, like all the bands are doing it now. Everybody in the music business is doing it. Two, three different mm-hmm. projects, but exactly yeah. what you said, like I, I wouldn't be able. And some of them do like all the projects at the same time, but I wouldn't be able to concentrate to be able to write stuff for one and then one for the other and they're kind of different John you know what I mean I, I don't know how some well, people do it right well I, I already explained that to um, my band too I said I I wouldn't be able to record both at the same time because then everything will sound the same right and I said I can't do that I'm not putting out I don't want Madame X and Maxine even though I am who I am and I sound like I sound it can't sound I, I'll be on that one plane I, I don't want it to sound the same I just don't want that Sure. So and there's no hurry. It's not like we have a label pushing us and saying you have two weeks to get it out or else. So I would rather put out great music. And once I'm done with this Madame X, then I can just kind of like release it from my, you know, the 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 song process in my mind and concentrate on that. Right. And, and go that way because it is a little bit more. It's all the Maxine stuff is a little bit almost touching progressive rock. rock you know, it's almost there. Gotcha. It's, uh, you know, and then the Madame X is more, uh, I would say, it's more commercial than I am for sure. Right, and right. There's nothing wrong with that, but um, it would be ultra commercial if they didn't have me playing guitar. <laughs> 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 because I'm I'm adding a lot more heaviness to it. You'll hear the rest of the record is a lot more. Like Resurrection, I, I wrote that one, and it's just crazy. And then my, and when- Monstrosity. I wrote that music and Roxy wrote the lyrics and that's where we're us two together are making monster songs. <laughs> wow. But <laughs> I know. I'm no, sure when, they're not hits because you know, it's they're too heavy, but they're they rock like you wouldn't believe. It's so awesome. That that's the best part. But all the other songs are they all sound very hit like, you know, like yeah, that could be a hit, right. that'll be a that'll be a hit. And I said to Kevin, I go, Kevin, we need a couple serious rockers, and I have them. I go, we have too many hits. <laughs> <laughs> he laughed. He goes, oh, you have too many hits? I go, yeah, I think we do. <laughs> oh, that's funny. It's just a joke, you know. So now when, uh, I, when I, I wanted to just throw in a couple monsters, that's all. But go ahead. Uh, what were you saying? You think that, when do you think that will be out? The Madam X? Yes. Soon as we're done, <laughs> it'll be 2015. I'm hoping, you know, here like, I, 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 if you talk to Chris, he'll probably say two weeks from now. If you talk to Brett, he might say like three weeks from now. That was, that <laughs> you talk to Roxy and me. What? 
that was pretty much their answers, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and if you talk to Roxy or, or myself, we're both, when it's done. <laughs> so, uh, funny. because we we're, we have all that work and we know it has to go into it. Not that they don't, but there's so so much guitar work and, and they can't they can't release it without me, so <laughs> if you know what I mean. Oh yeah, I would say like uh I don't know. I'm I'm gonna shoot for like I don't know. I will say in the spring sometime. I don't know exactly when. It when I'm done. When I'm done with my parts and I know that Brett can come in and just blow it off quick because he's fast, but uh, and then the bass is you know bass, but I I have parts, lots of parts going on. We'll we'll stick with when you're done. Yeah, when we're done, <laughs> 2015 for sure. <laughs> oh, that's great. Now, uh, last few questions. Uh, one, uh, yeah. now that Maddie Max is back together and you guys are all doing this all over again, do you kind of feel mm-hmm. um like rejuvenated, like reborn again? Yes. It's it's a feeling of um, energy and youth. And again, I call that uh, being lucky. When we played Sweden Rock, I, even looking at everybody, everybody still looked young. We're all looking at each other and we're like, <laughs> how could this be? You know, we didn't feel rickety. We didn't have that rickety old bit going on. And I, I think all the energy is there. We didn't even have as much makeup as we used to wear. You know, <laughs> you know, uh, the energy was definitely there. And I think the more we play, it, the more it will come back. And it'll get a little bit crazier again, just, you know, energy-wise. Right. Because that was pretty much really like a first real gig that we all did together. You know, a real one, a real show. So uh, I think the more that we play, um, it, it, it's only going to get better, more energy, and... Uh, it'll keep us definitely younger. <laughs> uh, now, you know. I, saw, I saw on one of your bios that you had listed my all-time favorite guitar player, and I always got to ask fellow guitarists who have this person listed or they talk about him a lot what their feelings are about him. That's the one and only Randy Rhodes. I knew that was coming. I knew we were going to say Randy Rhodes. I love Randy Rhodes. He was a big influence on me. You know, when you asked me that first question, that was when I was a lot younger. That got me going into rock. And then once right. I was in there, and we were, you know, uh, you know, starting a whole Adam X thing, and I heard Randy Rhodes. He was like classical guitar plugged into a, a Marshall. Sure. And I thought, I go, oh my God, he's he's playing classical parts. He really knows his music, and he was so young himself. Yeah. You know, and he, it's just so great. Oh my God, I I just think he's still one of the very best. You know, I, I, and I love Eddie Van Halen. Um, he's just, it's just crazy great. But I could tell that Randy Rhodes, like, really understood music itself. Like, reading right. music, you could just tell. And Eddie Van Halen's more of a feel. N- uh-huh. Nothing wrong with it. I, I, I don't know if he reads music or not. Be- because you can tell that Randy Rhodes did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I love them both. Don't get me wrong. They're both great. Oh, my God, Eddie Van Halen. Oh, my God, I love him. Uh, Randy Rhodes, I just knew. I go, oh my God, he's classical. He's classical metal. It just, it blew me away. Yeah, I, it just, I, even when I listen to this day, it's like, oh my God, so incredible. Yeah, yeah, yeah he was, he was a big part of it. Yes. I, I know, like even like to this day when I listen, I just think to myself like he was still a baby. Like I think to my, I think like when I was twenty five, like mm-hmm. wow, like I was still a kid, and he was the what he was doing. From you know the years with Ozzy and Quiet right beforehand, it's just like wow. He was a kid. What yeah. what was he? Twenty four when he died? Twenty three or four? Twenty five, yeah. Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, he and and he had done all that. It's because he knew his music. He was so great. Oh my God, I can't even imagine how incredible he would have been if if he were to have lived, you know, through his twenties, thirties, and forties, especially. I can't even right. imagine. Well, that would have been just outrageous. He would have been just so, I don't know. It's as though that he was put on the planet. He was he was that great and, and put that out there, planted the seed. Uh, he did his part and had to go. Right. You know, it's, it's just sad, but he sure made a huge difference in rock and roll to this day. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. 
Oh, my God. Yeah. yeah. Now, this is an off-music topic question. Being okay. a f- fellow Italian... Yeah, okay, okay, good. Do, do I you thought your name gravy? sounded Italian. <laughs> do you call it great? It's, it's, uh, is it pronounced Ranni? Uh, the, the real way, yes. Okay. How, what do you say? Ragni. You do? Yeah. So yeah. because the G should be silent, yeah. right? Should be Ronnie. And actually, and actually, my real first name Bay is my nickname. My real first name is Basso. Oh wow! Super Italian. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Where, what part of Italy are you from? Uh oh, you know what? I was just asked this question, and my aunt was telling me, and I forget. Mm-hmm. Oh. <laughs> Casa something. Um, where do you know general location? Uh, more towards the south, it seemed. Oh, okay. Southern Southern Italy, yeah. Oh, okay. Like there's Brindisi, Sorrento, somewhere down there. I'm trying to think of the name. It was is it? Is it? I, ago. Uh, well, I don't know. Well, when you think about it, you can text me. <laughs> <laughs> We're from uh, Casino, Italy. Both my oh, okay. parents, which was in between Rome and Naples, I, th- I guess closer to Rome. It's called Casino, Monte wow. de Casino. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well. Okay. Move on. <laughs> what was your question anyway? The the question is: Do you call it gravy or sauce? Sauce. Oh. Okay. <laughs> 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 okay. <laughs> I call it gravy. Okay. I, I call it gravy. I every Italian I have on the show, I have to ask, mm-hmm. and, and it's funny to hear all the different uh, arguments of it. Yes. Well, and, and and why do you ask that question anyway? Because well, I'm here in in the Philadelphia area, and okay. all growing growing up all my life, it was always mm-hmm. called gravy to me like my my grandparents lived with us and you know every sunday mm-hmm. my grandmother was making gravy and I, I was always called gravy and i really didn't realize a difference until like uh almost my mid 20s because i got together with my wife at the time and actually we were mm-hmm. moving in and um i said to her i said uh can you make some gravy and she looked mm-hmm. at me in a panic like what do you mean I said gravy for macaroni, and she's like, "Do you mm-hmm. mean brown gravy?" I'm like, "Huh? <laughs> what are you talking about?" And she pulls well, out. I, a gr- jar I agree of with her. <laughs> she, she pulls out a jar of ragu, and she's like, "Do you mean this?" I'm like, "No, like that's sacrilege. That's like not allowed in the house. Like, right? It's great. It's right. gravy. So, like, when I tell mean- people that, some people are like, yes, and then some people are no. No, that must be an East Coast thing. Y- you know what? And that's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. It is mm-hmm. because uh, actually I was just talking with uh, Carmine at Peace and uh, Vinny Apice the last few weeks, and I asked them. Cool. And they, and they both said that, they both said, "Well, if we're home, it's gravy, mm-hmm. but if we're out in California, it's sauce." <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Oh, well, I just I don't I say sauce. Sauce. Okay. I, I I'm just a, a curious Italian question. Okay, well, that was, or well, there you have it. There I have it. <laughs> well, there you have it, right. <laughs> oh, that's funny. And uh, what song do you want me to play from Madam X for you? And I'm going to uh, I'm automatically play in the new song, so pick a, a classic. Uh, Metal My Veins. You all picked the same song. <laughs> all right, stand up and fight. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Oh that's God! Funny. That's funny. Well, see, yeah. because that's that's the kind of music we really wanted to play. We wanted to wail and, and go crazy. That's all. That's fun. Yeah. yeah. Three for three, metal in my veins. <laughs> well, oh my God! When when will you be speaking with Roxy? Uh, I haven't touched base with her yet, so I hopefully uh, next week I'll get her taped. Oh, okay. Did, uh, has she contacted you yet? Not yet. No. Okay, I'll talk to her. Cool. I'll and give her a call no, um, after we hang up. Nice. Yeah, and, I'll make uh, sure. She just yeah, got well, back from all Vegas. I, I think she's kind of burned out from all that anyway right now. So, so 
so the next week I'm sure with her will be perfect. Cool, cool. Yeah, actually, right. You know, I mean, whatever is good for you. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Next week will be perfect. Um, okay. I was actually in Detroit for a quick minute last week, as a matter of fact. Oh yeah. <laughs> I was flying out to Phoenix, and we had a layover in Detroit. I'm like, wow, oh. I'm, in the land of, I'm in the land of Madison. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Okay. Uh, so, oh, all right, so well, the there, you actually day, were here. I was there for, yeah, like 20 minutes. Didn't even leave the airport. <laughs> well, I live pretty far from the airport anyway. We're in the suburbs. Gotcha. Uh, last thing I need, if you could just cut a quick ID for me. This okay. is Maxine Petrucci, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Okay. This is Maxine Petrucci from Madam X, and you're listening to Totally Driven Radio. Cool. That's it. Did you want more? That's good? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> you, you wanted the Madam X, one. right? Yeah. yeah, absolutely, absolutely. If you okay, want to do another good. one, spice it up, go for yeah, it. whatever you want to do. Uh, uh, okay, well, what would everybody else say? They all pretty much said the same thing, except for Brett. Oh. <laughs> Brett did a loud, piercing scream that blew my ears out. Oh, yeah, he's good for that. Well, that's what you should use is his with the scream. That's always cool. Yeah. I, all right, I, I'll just say, I'll, okay, all right, I'll just do a quick one. Go for it. Hi, this is Maxine Petrucci from Madam X, and you're listening to the Totally Rockin', Totally Driven Radio. There we I go. just threw some rock in there. Totally rock and totally driven. <laughs> there you go. You spiced it up. Very Is good. It, well, yeah. Whatever you want to use, it's okay. I don't want to add too much junk. That's, hey, I'll play them both. Don't worry about it. Okay, good. Cool. All right. Well, and so, are we good? We're all How good? much time did I take of yours in comparison to them? I don't even know what time it is. Uh, we did it. Hello. Oh, okay. Did you get enough information, or yeah, is, yeah, is it all good? Yeah. All good. Okay, good. And you're going to go in and just kind of clean it up, right? Yeah, I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to add some music yeah. to it. Yep. Be all good. Okay, cool. That's awesome. And, and then I'll send you all the info when it's getting ready to air. Oh, yeah, and uh, and I'll post it. When, when you're ready, let me know. And and I'll, I think you said you're doing it in segments, right? So yeah. whatever segments, I'll keep posting it, all the segments, like on my Facebook, my Google+, Plus, LinkedIn. Um, you know, all that stuff. You the Madam X page, the whole bus. works. <laughs> what? You actually Yeah, I do. Bus? Do you? I, I, I can't even, like, think about getting involved with all that. Uh, it's not as um, crazy as Facebook, but um, there's a lot of people using it. I have, like, people from Guitar World and Sebastian's on it. I got all of them. Oh, wow. Well. They're all on it. Yeah, because I, I mean, I'm. It might Facebook. be a good. It might be good for you. It might be a good thing for you to do. It's, I think people are. What? They are using it. I don't have time. I know to what you mean. I on. I don't go to it as much as Facebook, but it's there. It's just it's there. It's cool. It works out. Yeah, I mean, I'm between Facebook and Twitter and uh, LinkedIn and Instagram. It's like, please, it's a full time job. Oh yeah, I know. You're right about that. You're right. Well, wait, you don't need to do it. I'll I'll put it on my uh, Google Plus page, and it covers you. <laughs> so don't worry. <laughs> Very All cool. right, cool. So yeah, let me know, and then when you figure out where you're from in Italy, you could just text it to me or something. Let me know. Absolutely, you got it. Whenever you feel like it. Cool. Well, that was fun. I really appreciate that you let me do this. That's awesome. No problem. I'm thankful you did it. Yeah. And uh, Roxy's next, and I'll give her a call. And you guys can cool. work that out. I'll have her email you. Does that sound good? Yeah. Sounds good. Okay, good deal. Okay, babe. Thanks. That was awesome. Yeah. Great talking to you, and thank you. Great talking to you. Cool. All righty. Take care, and okay. uh, enjoy, enjoy your sauce. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and enjoy your gravy. Okay. <laughs> thank you. All right. <laughs> okay. Okay, bye. See you. Bye.